Yellow TV is sponsored by MPB 4x4 Independent Land Rover Specialists and Paddock Spares. Okay, hello, welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos. We're continuing with measuring components for our 300 TDI overhaul. And we have here a set of micrometers. Last video we used the 0 to 25 mil micrometer on the rocker shaft. Well, this was more a case of just measuring to see the difference without having to really record the results. It's just a matter of observation to see how much wear we had in the rocker shaft. In this tutorial, we're going to be measuring the crank journals, both the big end and the main journals, to check for taper and ovality. And I'll explain these as we continue. Uh, last week I uh, gave you a little task to do and thank you for the people who did actually come back with some measurements to tell me if I was right or not. And I'm actually going to leave you with this thought if you look again at the micrometer after this tutorial to tell me if this measurement is actually right on the valve stem or not. Micrometer readings, uh, they're actually just a matter of learning how to measure them and then a little bit of experience to get it right. It's uh, not a big deal, but it's one of these uh, skills you can add to your um, basket of skills to make you more proficient. Um, with the workshop manual, it comes up with a lot of data, which is important more for the engineer than perhaps the mechanic. But because we're trying to save as much money as we can and do as much work as we can, we can assess components first before we either condemn them or send them off to an engineer. The crankshaft itself can be reground and there are diameters stated in the workshop manual that an engineer can regrind these journals down to. We obviously want to save some money, so there's no point in sending a crank off to be reground when there's no need for it. So we'll measure it first and assess the condition of the journals. It's not rocket science here, we're just measuring the mains um, for ovality and the tape, and we also need to measure the big end journals as well for both. I'll explain this as we carry on on this tutorial. First of all, before measuring, we need to assess the overall condition of the crankshaft. And we'll start at the nose area, which is where the pulleys ran on. Now, if these are indentated, it's shown that the pulley has been loose. So that will cause damage. If the keys themselves have looked like they've been loose, then this renders the crankshaft unserviceable and needs to be scrapped. The shell bearings, or the white metal shell bearings, will tell a story of how the condition of the journals are. These are soft metals, so they will wear and they are basically, well, sacrificial more than anything. But if there's deep scoring or burning, then that will be an issue because it's either been overheated or run out of oil. Uh, whereas you see where the layers have been worn through on these bearings, then it isn't too bad. However, there is a scoring on here, so the crankshaft will at least need to be polished if the journals are not oval or tapered. The reason for scoring is probably carbon deposits in the oil or it's picked up something from the sump, but I hardly doubt that. Temptation to just replace the shell bearings is quite high on most people's agenda, however it's worth measuring the crank as well to make sure it's okay. Then proceed, once you've had a look at the uh, shells, is to check the crankshaft journals themselves to make sure they're not um, overheated, signs of overheating and scoring. Also, where the seal runs on the rear main, make sure that's not deeply scored. Once you're happy that the crankshaft journals are in a fair condition, we can go ahead and measure them. So in the workshop data, we'll see that the main bearing journal diameter is about 64 millimeters or 63 and a half. And the big end journal is about 58.7 or 59 millimeters. So what we need is a micrometer that is capable of measuring that distance. Now, our micrometer here we have from 50 to 75 millimeters, and it starts at 50 mil. So, we'll need to first of all zero it in using uh, an accurate 50 mil measuring block. Okay, so you can see here what I'm trying to do is set this at zero. Now, this is as close as it can be, but basically, showing you on this, and I think I did it in the last video, what we need to do is bring this right down to zero using the thimble ratchet on the end and then zero the body in with this slot here at the back with a tool and I'll show you how to do this 
every time the micrometer is used it needs to be zeroed in to make sure you get as an accurate a reading as possible right so basically this uh, little C spanner that we have what we'll do is we'll just pull this round to the zero marker okay so that's where we'll take our reading from that is it absolute zero and then recheck it just winding it off a little bit and then winding it on to the tension using the ratchet on the end okay so that's a perfect zero you can see that yeah it may be a bit difficult to hold the micrometer so you could put it gently into a vise and then use your uh, your gauge block and then set it up this way which to me to be honest with you is a lot easier once you've zeroed it in then you're ready to work so understanding the increments i've got a micrometer here and it's measuring at 9.61 millimeters and how do we get to this we look at the sleeve so we have increments at 0 to 5 and then from there they are 1 millimeter increments which goes up to 9 so from the mark to number 5 we count 6 7 8 9 then lower down under there we have a 0 0.5 of a millimeter or half a millimeter increments so that's a nine and a half then on our thimble we have between zero and 0.5 of a millimeter with 0 0.01 increments so as it's reading now it's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.01 which makes 0 0.11 Okay, so you add 11 to the 0.5, which will make it 61. So we should have 9.61 millimeters. It takes a little bit of practice to get right with a micrometer, but once you've actually got used to it, it is good fun using them. Our micrometer is the other way round to the one I've just shown you, where the millimeter increments are underneath. So we start on ours from 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 55, and you have your 0.5 of a millimeter increments in between, and then we have on the thimble itself at 0 0.01 increments up to 0.5 of a millimeter. Okay, so plan section of a crank journal should be round like so, which um, measured at any point should measure the same. This is an oval and it's not round, so it will measure different distances depending on where you measure it. There are three places you measure on a crank journal and they will be at 120 degree intervals, so we get an idea of what ovality there would be on a crankshaft. You measure it in the middle of the journal, like so and you measure it three times, okay? You get your measurements and record them. You want to do this systematically for five of the main journals and then four of the big ends or where the conrods are actually sat on, okay? I'll finish doing this in a minute. So with the data, first of all, you can see maximum ovality is at 0 0.04 of a millimeter. And the service limit, which you'd look at, is, is the maximum wear would be at 63.36 for the mains and 50. 8.637 millimeters for the big end journals. So, checking our data that we've recorded here from three points, we have a 6348 and a 6347 and 6348. Maximum ovality is 0 0.04, so the only difference here is 0 0.01, and it's within the service limit, which is 63.36. So you can see 6347 is the minimum on this one. Okay, so if you aren't sure exactly where to measure the journals, as I said, it's directly in the center of the journal, and this uh, is the big end, which is where the Conrad is connected to. That's the first measurement, okay, record that one. If you've had trouble and um, you get varying measurements which seem a bit odd, then re-measure it and keep re-measuring it. But basically, the second measurement is at 120 degrees. Always use the ratchet to get the right pressure to get a good measurement. And then the third measurement is 120 degrees opposite. So you basically, those are the three measurements you do. Okay, that is for ovality. 
this is not the end of the story by far. Okay, so we look at a planned section of a crank journal and it should look something like this. Okay, now rectangle if you like. Now this is a taper where it's worn more on one end than the other and now this is what we have to check the journals for as well. So if we're looking actually in the workshop manual, crankshaft taper I th think I've put in and it came up on the PDF in the workshop pages rather than the engine data. So I'll just pull this down here and I'll show you exactly where it is. It's just here, maximum journal taper end to end at 0.025 of a millimeter. What we're looking for is the difference between two measurements as such. So get them recorded. So the taper on main journal is 0.2 of a difference. So we're close there. Whereas on number one, Big end journal, they're exactly the same, so there's no taper on there. So to measure them, basically, we've got a journal here. We measured in the middle for the uh, ovality. Now, if we measure on each end of the section here, you can see this is what we're looking for. We measure at this point here, take readings, and measure at this point here, and then check the difference for how much of a taper it actually has on the journal. Easy, huh? Right, so I'm going to carry on and finish measuring my crankshaft. You can see I've already started writing the details down. I didn't quite finish it because I want to get this video done. But basically, you have five main journals and four big end journals. So you want to be recording the data and comparing it. There are a few more measurements we need to do. And one of those is to see if the crank has excessive run out or whether it's bent or not. And I'll be showing this in the next video. We then have to measure a few more things and this measuring is not going to go away, but it is over half the job of an engine rebuild.